Sacrificing an ultimate skill isn't something any normal person would ever consider, but when you're facing an attack faster than light and strong enough to disintegrate literally anything, it seems like more of a fair trade when the only other option is, well, getting purified out of existence. It's not often we get to see Rimuru with his back against the wall like this, but if even Raphael's in a panic, it's probably best to listen. Now, the loss of Beelzebub isn't what I would even consider the most important part of this fight since, in the buildup before it, there was so much more. A back and forth struggle we only saw portions of in the anime where both Rimuru and Hinata believed they were on the verge of defeat. This in turn caused them to push themselves past their limits, and where Hinata used experience to push Rimuru back, Rimuru adapted and countered in the way he does best. What the anime should have shown us in between all that though was just how it was Hinata's offensive became so oppressive. So as I go through her skills and the steps she took to keep up with Rimuru, hopefully you'll come to appreciate this feat of power in which a human was able to hold off a true demon lord. This iconic fight exactly as it happened in the novels. Before I get started though, there's a little surprise I want to share coming from my Mugen clothing brand. For a limited time starting today, we have this Tensita inspired tee available for pre-order. It's a special add-on along with the Mashoku Tensei New Beginnings collection and it'll only be available for the next two weeks. The shirts are a thick 100% cotton for quality and comfort, and the designs are all screen printed so you can be sure they'll never fade. We also ship anywhere internationally, so no matter where you are in the world you can be sure that we'll get them to you. As far as this design in particular goes, this is probably my favorite Mugen piece yet. It's not so out there that everyone will know it's anime, but the grey and teal contrast definitely makes it clear that it's slime related. So if you want to get yours before it's gone forever, then be sure to order using the link down in the description. I'll also be giving one away to those who follow the Instagram. But now, let's talk about what we missed from this epic showdown. Hinata's past was actually a core part preceding this fight since not only did it give context for as to why she left Shizue, but it also explained why victory was the only option here. It's a pretty tragic backstory going all the way back to her past life, but I have a feeling it's something that'll be covered next episode. If it doesn't, then I'll talk about it next video, but for now what you need to know is that Hinata's position is one that she feels stuck in. You see, since her goal is to make a world where everyone can be happy, this current skirmish with Tempest has brought all that to a standstill. Negotiations were unfortunately far behind her, and if she was ever going to get the chance to explain why things turned out the way they did, she knew the only way she could was by winning. She felt victory was the only way to reopen the conversation, since with the way Rimuru was now, he didn't seem like he was willing to listen at all. To Hinata, this was the breaking point defining the very future that she was working towards, and if she wanted to continue on this path that she sought out for herself, then the first step on it was to beat Rimuru here. Only then would she have the chance to explain things, and only then did she think that Rimuru would listen. This brings us now to the actual fight, and the first thing Hinata did was activate her Measurer skill. A unique skill comprised of the subskill Analyze and Appraise, which if you've watched my past videos you'd know is also part of Rimuru's Raphael skill. It allows Hinata to gleam information of the person she's scanning, but can only do so if they're weak enough. Now that Rimuru possesses an ultimate skill, determining his strength isn't something her own skills can do anymore. It was indication that his power had risen to at least her levels or higher. It was when she activated her Usurper skill next that that's when she knew he was at the same level of Luminous now. Reason being that while normally Usurper would always give her the advantage over those more powerful than her, the result she saw now was one she'd only ever seen once before. To give a bit of context for how this skill works first though, it basically gave her the ability to steal the skills of those who were stronger than her. You see, if she ever found herself faced against an opponent who was superior, Usurper would rob their skills and make them her own. It didn't mean that she could use them as proficiently as the person that she was stealing them from, but to take away something her opponent worked so hard to obtain, well, that was a devastating enough blow to change the tide of any battle. Of course, this didn't work if the opponent she was facing was weaker than her, and it's the reason Usurper didn't work on Rimuru when she fought him the first time. Her attempt at using it came back as not applicable, and that only happened when she was fighting someone not as skilled as her. You may be wondering how it was she was able to attempt to steal Ifrit then, and that was a special subskill that came from her mastery of Usurper. By honing her skills to the point that she had, Hinata developed a new part of Usurper called Force Takeover. It was a special rule-breaking subskill that allowed her to rob powers from opponents that were weaker than her. 
It probably didn't work as efficiently as Usurper did, but it was definitely a valuable asset making her robber abilities even more versatile. Now, in the cases when she was fighting someone stronger, the results of her Usurper skill would come back as either fail or success. Fail just meant it didn't work this time, but with zero cost to attempting the skill again, Hinata could just continuously use Usurper until it finally did work. Given enough time and space, she could always make the skill succeed no matter what the circumstances were. That's why to see her results on Rimuru come back as blocked, it was a surprise that she'd only ever experienced once before. One unique to those in possession of an ultimate skill like Rimuru and Luminous. So, this resulted in her resorting to the greatest weapons in her arsenal, which was the legendary blade Moonlight given to her by Luminous and the original Holy Spirit armor from the Holy Western Church. The armor was the church's greatest countermeasure against monsters, and it was an item wielded only by the great heroes of the past. Equipment that could only be worn by those truly beloved by the spirits, and its purpose was for fighting against the likes of dragons and other superior class monsters. Bearing such armor freed Hinata of all her restrictions, and it ascended her to a level beyond that of just enlightened. At this point, she was now at the saint level, an awakened state similar to that of a demon lord. Hinata knew even this had little chance of winning, but even so, she was still excited a bit. She couldn't help but smile at the fierce battle she was about to experience. This brings us now to Rimuru's perspective, and to him this opponent with no weaknesses somehow just became even more powerful. Her weapon was unlike any he'd ever seen before, and if he was going to compete, he knew he needed the one that he currently had Kurobe making. This was a sword that had been cooking in his stomach for quite a while now, taking in constant exposure to a steady stream of magicules. Only recently had Rimuru taken it out though, and because of that, it was still a work in progress currently back at Kurobe's workshop. That being the case, the only substitute Rimuru could think of was to use Uriel and have it apply a magic aura to his current blade, resulting in the dark flames that we see in the anime. Now, the initial exchange was far faster than we can even imagine, since even with Rimuru's mind accelerate increasing his brain speed to a million times the normal, he still struggled to just barely react to Hinata. It was almost as if he was fighting Milam all over again. Fortunately, this time he wasn't losing, but with no blows being landed at all, he definitely wasn't winning either. It's actually pretty crazy when you remember how Hinata's currently going up against a true demon lord. Rimuru thought his awakening would give him the advantage, but instead it just made the two of them even. In fact, it made him realize that in their last fight, Hinata wasn't even trying. If she was, then he knew he wouldn't be here to be fighting her this second time. Now, to explain how it is Hinata is able to even keep up, it's about as strenuous and taxing as you might think it is. Remember, Hinata isn't like Rimuru in the sense that she can keep fighting forever. She is only human, and part of her being human means that there's a limit to her endurance. Her muscles will ache and breathing become short, and that's two things that Rimuru doesn't even have to worry about. Her skills and arts help to make those issues less impactful, but when facing monsters, those were just the disadvantages that came with it. So, her measurer skill would speed up her mind to a thousand times faster than normal, but even with that making the world seem like it was at a standstill, it still wasn't enough to land a strike on Rimuru yet. She knew she needed to push even further beyond that, and though the pressure from such mental strain started to burst capillaries in her brain, her self-regenerative magic restored them before any signs of weakness could be exhibited. She would then use Measurer's prediction to figure out where Rimuru was going to attack, and this just barely helped her dodge Rimuru's counters. So, though the anime made it seem like Hinata was unfazed by everything, in actuality her body was slowly reaching its limit. If she truly was going to beat Rimuru in this battle here, then what she needed most was a demi-human spiritual body. That was the final wall that she was yet to overcome in this life, the last hurdle before finally being freed from the shackles currently limiting her. Fortunately, the key difference between her and Rimuru was years of training, since while sure Rimuru can copy skills and repeat the movements necessary to grasp the fundamentals, knowing how best to use them was completely different. It was something only years of experience could truly replicate, and Rimuru's novice application of such made it clear that that was exactly what was happening here. A good example is the way both were continuously dodging each other, since while Rimuru was relying on his physical gifts and mind acceleration of a million, Hinata was making up for her slower processing with raw talent and experience. 
Rimuru couldn't understand how it was that was possible, and it's that very inability to do so which shows just how inexperienced he truly is. Like, he knows he's stronger and more gifted in every aspect, yet no matter how hard he tries, nothing will work on her. So, just like how Hinata knew that defeat was imminent, so too did Rimuru come to that same conclusion should things continue like this. In fact, the only person Rimuru believed could keep up with Hinata right now was probably Hakudo and even he would lose. This resulted in the learning of the skill Predict Future Attack, and it's important to know that it wasn't acquired. You see, unlike how most of his skills were acquired via some form of awakening or evolution, this one was learned only by watching Hinata. By observing her movements and reasoning that she was predicting his attacks in order to dodge, Rimuru had learned how to do so himself. He had essentially copied her years of experience by simply watching her. This new skill now displayed every move Hinata was going to make, and rather than identify every possibility of attack, it instead highlighted only the guaranteed attacks. If the line of a blade was showing up as a prediction, then there was a 100% chance that Hinata would be attacking that way. It completely removed the element of surprise from the battle, and essentially secured what Rimuru thought was victory. It only took a couple of exchanges for Hinata to realize that something was different now, and as soon as she realized his predictive calculations were superior to her own, that's when Hinata knew her odds of winning were minimal now. She could no longer go easy or try to avoid killing him, since to hold back in the slightest would just do her a disservice. This brings us now to Hinata's Melt Slash, which was a type of magic weapon fusion from the Overblade family. A form of weapon art that makes use of miracle level holy magic. Rimuru didn't know how powerful this attack was going to be, but in the off chance that it did end up killing him, he had told Benimaru that he was next in line ahead of him. Hinata, on the other hand, examined the battlefield around her, and when she saw that her comrades were being treated fairly, more than ever did she want to win the fight so that she could discuss things anew with Rimuru. She was so dead set on victory being the only way to renegotiate things that her ultimate move was what she felt circumstances called for now. The reason she put on such a spectacle while casting it was because, since she knew Rimuru was going to end up copying it anyway, she wanted to ensure his replication of it was perfect. As a disintegration spell that could destroy literally anything, it was only natural it be respected as the overwhelming force it was. I mean, the novel describes it as a power to dispel and evaporate all types of evil, but what it's actually doing is purifying everything. Whether you want to call it disintegration or purification, anything and everything including magicules and the spiritrons that make them up were all dissipated the moment they came into contact with Hinata's Melt Slash. That's why nothing could possibly defend against it, since anything Rimuru could put up would be effectively meaningless. Then, as an attack that approached at supposedly light speed, dodging wasn't a possibility either. The only thing Rimuru could do was stand there as this spiritual light bore towards him ready to split him in half. Fortunately, Hinata only aimed for his stomach, so even if the spell did hit and make contact, Rimuru still should have survived just with only his head left. The rest would be seared off as if they weren't even part of him in the first place. That's when Raphael would create the plan to sacrifice Beelzebub instead, and with the right timing, Melt Slash would disintegrate that in place of Rimuru. All the magicules which once consisted of that ultimate skill were now purified and gone from existence. In terms of a percentage, it was about 70% of all the magicules Rimuru currently had in him. Luckily, that meant Rimuru could survive another day, but at the same time it came at the cost of one of his ultimate skills. A pretty massive price considering what was at stake, but when you hear Raphael panic, I suppose you just listen. So, with Hinata's attack stopped and her sword and armor now gone, the fight between her and Rimuru was now over. It was a pretty intense back and forth of power versus experience that, in my opinion, could have done a bit more to highlight Hinata. I'm sure no one thought that she could keep up with him after his awakening, but here she was proving otherwise. In fact, if not for Rimuru learning that new skill right on the fly, then it's very possible this fight could have turned out pretty differently. But yeah, that's pretty much everything you missed from Hinata vs Rimuru. If you liked what you saw and want to see more, then be sure to leave a like and let me know down in the comments. Now, before I go, don't forget that the Tensora-inspired Genesis T will only be available for two weeks. I wish I had a sample to show you guys how good the design looks in person, but unfortunately all I have right now are the Mashoku Tensei ones. The quality is going to be the exact same as these ones though, so what you can expect is a thick 100% cotton tee that's slightly oversized and boxy. 
So, if you want to secure yours before it's gone forever, then be sure to get your order in using the link down in the description. I'll also be giving one away for those who follow the Mugen Instagram, so be sure to check that out too if you want a chance to win one. But anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao!